Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. Today we are gonna be in Inkscape and I'm gonna show you how to make a 3D layered SVG file in the Bluey character. All of these are all individual pieces that I have created very easily with a few steps in Inkscape. Inkscape is a free program that I love so much because it is free. So I am gonna show you how to make this exact layered SVG file. The very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up a blank window in Inkscape. We're just gonna move this over to the side, pretend like it's not even there. Okay, when you have that open, you're gonna to want to go over into your internet browser. I have Safari open, and all you wanna do is search up Bluey Color Page. Then you wanna go over into Images. In the Bluey Color Pages, you can really use any color page that you're wanting. Uh, the steps are all going to be the same. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click this one. This is the one that I used previously, so that's the one that I'm going to use. And I am just going to right click this and I'm going to open image in new tab. A new tab is going to pop up and then you want to take a screenshot. So command shift four on your keyboard if you're on a Mac and this like little arrow aiming tool will pop up. Then all you want to do is take a screenshot of it. You're going to draw a box around exactly what we are trying to create for our 3D SVG file. Let go. It's going to go down here. Then you want to go back over into Inkscape and drag that screenshot into Inkscape. This box is going to pop up. I've never pressed a button on any of this, but just press OK. Okay, I'm gonna make this bigger just so we can see what we're doing. You wanna make sure that this right here is locked so it resizes proportionately. Okay, the very next thing you're gonna to wanna to do because we are gonna color match this. If you, if, you notice, if you notice in my original layered SVG file, everything, it looks exactly like the color it's supposed to with an actual bluey. So what you're going to do is you're gonna go back into Safari and you're gonna look up bluey PNG. Okay, the very first one pops up. Any one will work because we are just looking for the colors of this. I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna right click and press open image, a new tab. This one's going to pop up. It's okay that it's low resolution. And then I am just gonna command shift four on my keyboard, taking another screenshot and we're gonna draw a box around Bluey. Letting go, it's gonna go down here, go back into Inkscape and we'll just drag it up. Pressing okay. Okay, we don't need this for right now, so we'll just move this up. But this is what we're gonna use to color match our Bluey. Okay, going back over into the original screenshot of the color page that we used. This is not a SVG file at this point. This is still a screenshotted picture. So what we need to do is right click and press trace bitmap, and then this will pop up. What you're gonna wanna do is press update. See how now this changed to that? We just wanna make sure that everything that we have in the original screenshot looks like it is right here. Now, sometimes the scan won't scan very well or you're missing piece, pieces to your color file. So if that's the case, then you just want to put your plus sign up and then every single time you make a change, you wanna press update and it will change. So if we go all the way up to like 6.9, 0.69 and press update. It doesn't have a very big change, right? But if we go all the way over to one and press update, do you see how now it's a black screen? That means it's not a good trace. So you just wanna find the trace that looks good to you. This right here at 0.99, do you see all those little specks? Now that is not going to be a good trace. So I'm gonna take this back down and I'm gonna go over to the original numbers and press update. I like the look of that. Okay, when you have that done, just press update again, just to make sure that you have the scan the way you want it. And then we're gonna press okay. It will look like nothing happens, but you wanna come up here and X out of this box. And then all you wanna do is drag the top layer over and away from the screenshot. How you know that this one right here is the screenshot is if you drag this down using our artboard this like weird uh rectangle line is the is our artboard on inkscape if we drag this new thing down and in between our color page you can see the back of the artboard that means that this is our scanned file if we go to the original one and i go down do you see how now i can't see that line that's behind the artboard but in here i can 
Okay, this is gonna be our original. We do not want this, we're gonna delete it. Okay, I'm gonna take this and bring it over. Okay, this is still not a layered SVG file. It is now a cuttable file. You could totally cut it, you could engrave it if you had a laser cutter, but we need to break it apart to make some layers like we have in the original one that I had. So clicking on our Bluey, I am going to do Command Shift and K. That is breaking apart. If you don't wanna use your keyboard shortcuts, you could go up here into Path and then down here to Break Apart. Okay, every single time you do a Break Apart, the largest pieces to your design are always going to be in the forefront. The smaller pieces are gonna be in the back. So what I always like to do is click on the very, very top portion, which is always gonna be the black, and I'm gonna change this over into like a color that's not gonna be black. Because when I send this to the back, do you see how now I have a whole bunch of black pieces? If we don't change the color, we won't be able to see what we're doing. Now that we have that done, we are going to take that one screenshot that we had of the colors, and we are gonna drag this down. And I am just gonna make it bigger so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so we are gonna change the very back pink one back to black at a later time, but just keep it as a different color just so we can see what we're doing. Now what you wanna do is essentially color match everything from the left to the right. So let's start with this light blue color and I am just going to click on a couple light blue colors that are black that should be light blue. I'm gonna click on this one bottom paw, I'm gonna press shift on my keyboard and I'm gonna click that other bottom paw and it looks like his hands are gonna be that light blue, and his eyebrows are also gonna be that same light blue. When I have that, I am gonna let go of my keyboard. I'm gonna come over here into fill. If this box is not popped up, you can come down here and just click on this color and this box will pop up. So if there is no box, popped up right here, then all you need to do is go down here into fill and click that fill and then this box will pop up. That's exactly what you want. Now you wanna press this eye dropping tool and we are gonna hover over this light blue color and just click. And now everything that we wanted light blue is now light blue. Okay, going over and we're gonna work on this like uh, periwinkle color now. So let's just click on things that need to be periwinkle. Click on one, shift on the keyboard and do another one. Okay, I have everything that should be periwinkle, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. Go over here to the eyedropper tool, click on the periwinkle, see how everything changed? Oh, it looks like I missed his belly, which is light blue, so I'm just gonna click the light blue and do the same thing. However, this time, instead of going over here because I've already picked the color, I'm gonna go over here. This is not really like a you have to do type of thing. The reason why I decided to go over here versus here is because sometimes there is some shading in your screenshots that you took. And so it could end up being a different color uh, when you upload this to a different craft cutting software. So because of that, I just like to, if I already picked the color, I'm just gonna do it on my current design. Okay, and let's pick this like purplish, blue navy color. I am going to just select everything that needs to be that purple navy color. Okay, when I have that done, I'm just gonna press the eyedropper tool and select that color. Okay, so let's go and work on the tan color. I'm just gonna click the inside portion of the ears and his mouth. I'm gonna do the eyedropper tool and then get the tan. Okay, we need to change his eyeballs to white, so let's work on the white, doing the same steps. Okay, you can see that right here in this eyeball, do you see how we're like missing the inside of his eye? But I can't click it. Remember what I said previously, the largest portions are always brought to the forefront. So this is the largest portion of his eye. So let's just go back one, and do you see how now it's revealed? You could leave it like this if you wanted to. If you were doing like a layered SVG file for vinyl, cardstock, or what have you, you would have an additional piece that you would have to do. If you remember correctly, the very back of this is going to be black and our final project. So what I'm going to do is select the inside of the eye, pressing shift on the keyboard, and the white of that eye. And I'm gonna do command shift and the minus key. And I'm slicing it in there. 
If you didn't want to use your keyboard shortcuts, all you have to do is go up into path and then difference. That is just eliminating one extra piece that I'm going to have to assemble later. Okay, the inside of his mouth, it needs to be changed to white. So doing the dropper tool and I'm going to click the white. Okay, and then it looks like the nostril is two different colors. Okay, we are almost finished. So this right here, if we went back over into our screenshot, do you see how technically this isn't even actually a color? It's a, supposed to be a cutout in the backer portion of our layered SVG file. So going back over into Inkscape, I'm gonna click that back and it's the same thing that we did with the eye. Click the back, shift on the keyboard. I'm gonna click that pink outline and press Command, Shift, and the minus key, and I'm gonna slice it through. And do you see how now we have that hole? That's perfect. And actually, when we were over here and we were looking at this little cutout, I did notice that in the hand, there is another little cutout in the hand. So going back over into Inkscape, you see how it's not there? That's because the biggest portion of his hand is brought to the forefront. So then what we want to do is just send it to the back just a little bit until we reveal the inside portion of his hand. Same thing we did with the eye. I'm going to select the hand, shift on the keyboard, and that inside portion, I'm going to command shift in the minus key. Okay, and the very last thing that you're going to want to do to make this SVG file 100% looking exactly the way it is, I'm just going to click the very back portion that we changed pink, and now I'm going to change it back to black and all of a sudden now we have our finished file looks exactly like bluey right there is an additional step to this we can delete the color screenshot now we don't need that anymore because ours looks exactly the way it should the additional step if you wanted to do this is you would just select all the colors that are of like colors so i am only going to select that like navy blue bluish purple color and i'm going to command g which is group you also could right click and press group down here okay when i have that done i'm going to send it to the back and now i'm going to go in and i'm only going to select the periwinkle colors command g which is group send it to the back and now i'm only going to select that light blue color and command g which is group and send it to the back it looks like I missed one of those navies. We're gonna fix that here in a second. So don't worry if you missed one. So I'm gonna do the tan, selecting only the tan pieces, Command G, which is group, send it to the back. And I'm gonna do just the whites, Command G, which is group, send it to the back. Okay, these two pieces right here do not have like other light colors. So all I'm gonna do is select them and send them to the back. And we're gonna do the same thing with the very back black piece, just send it to the back. Okay, remember this piece right here, we forgot, or at least I forgot to gr uh, group it with the rest of them. So I am going to go back and click on the color that I missed, Command Shift G, which is ungroup, pressing Shift on my keyboard and that little guy and doing Command G, which is group. And now everything is grouped together. So if we were to just drag this over, see how everything is where it's supposed to be. And now we have less confusion when we go to cut this on our craft cutters. Okay, so the very next thing you're gonna wanna do is save your work. So I am gonna go to File and Save As. Okay, I'm gonna change this over to Bluey SVG. And then I'm going to change it from Inkscape to a plain SVG file, and then press save. Okay, just to show you that my SVG files do work, I'm in Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna go to Upload and Upload Image. I'm gonna find my file and press Open, and here is my original one and the one we did together. I don't need to name this, and I'm just gonna press Upload. We're gonna find that uploaded file and add it to Canvas. Okay, and anytime that you upload an SVG file into Cricut Design Space, it's all grouped together. So I'm just gonna command shift and G, which is ungroup. Okay, and then look at that. All of my pieces are stuck together looking cute. Okay, if you're using Cricut Design Space, and remember how we grouped this in Inkscape, if we go over here into make it, and do you see how when we go over into the preparation screen, now everything is jumbled up and not where 
it's supposed to be. Now, this right here definitely saves mat on material if you do it that way. But if you wanted to make sure that like everything was where it was supposed to be, you wanna take each layer and press attach. Each individual layer, don't do everything attached because then it will all change to one color. Okay, now that I have everything that has the group colors attached, if we go back over here and to make it, see how now the eye is where, the eyes and the face are where it's supposed to be, so is the tan, and we have this. So it definitely makes you use more material, but at least things are where it's at. This is like really helpful when you're working with vinyl. Okay, and one last tip for paper crafters is sometimes when you have layered SVG files, it's kind of a pain in the butt to try and figure out how to relayer your project. So what I always like to do is, is I like to select my SVG file. I'm gonna Command C and V, which is copy and paste, and I'm gonna get a whole nother Bluey. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is on every single layer of Bluey, besides the very back black piece, I am going to come over here into operation from basic cut. I'm gonna send it over to score and I'm gonna just do this for every single layer that's over on the left, but the back black piece. Okay, let's change this black, this dark black piece over to a different color just so you can see what I'm talking about. Do you see how now our very back black piece has all these weird lines? We can select everything and press attach and we can go over here to the very right and we can delete this very back black piece that's right here. So now when we go over into the cut screen, everything over here is gonna be all jumbled up before, right? So we're gonna save on material for everything else. But if we go over into what is supposed to be the black, but I changed it to pink so we can see what we're doing. Now you are gonna need your score tool and what's gonna happen is, is your score tool is going to mark where everything needs to be glued down. So if you are a paper crafter, you will have a little score line that is only for the mouth, for the belly. Now you can tell where to place your pieces and then you can still save on material because we can move these around and we're not wasting so much material. All right, y'all, I sure hope I inspired you to create and learn how to make your own SVG files and I will see you later.